Good morning, everybody. You're very welcome to today's training session. For those of you who have just logged on, we've already completed a sound check, so thank you to everybody who helped out with that. Um, if, if you do have difficulties hearing us, it is possible to increase the volume on your, on your laptop and most phone systems as well, you can increase the volume. Um, today's webinar is being recorded, so we will send a link to the recording um, of today's webinar to all attendees. Um, today's webinar is BrightPay Payroll and Automatic Enrollment Training. At the end of today's training session, you will be able to use BrightPay to suit your, your payroll requirement needs, including how to set up your employer and employ employee records, how to create and process pay items, how to complete a payroll run, how to generate customized reports to suit your business requirements, and how to automate automatic enrollment in BrightPay. You are more than welcome to type in any questions into the question bar there on the control panel on the right-hand side. And at the end of today's um, training session, we'll have a, a Q&A session. Today's um, presenter is Victoria Clark. Victoria is the UK support manager here with BrightPay and has been working providing payroll training and support for over eight years. So I'll now pass you over to Victoria to begin today's training session. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Karen, and good morning, everybody. All right, just bear with us. I might just do a quick change over there. Okay, so today's agenda, um, what I'll do with the training session this morning, just with our 90 minutes, I'll be dividing it up into three sections for you. So we'll begin, first of all, by looking at the payroll functionality in BrightPay, so namely how to set up employer and employee details, then how to create and enter pay items, um, how to process your pay periods, and then submit your RTI returns to HMRC. Um, how to keep a track of your payments to HMRC, and then also um, how you can generate your own reports, etc., for analysis purposes. Secondly, then we'll just take a look at, at our CIS functionality that is new in the software for this tax year. So we'll have a look at entering contractor and subcontractor details, um, how to verify subcontractors with HMRC, how to process your subcontractor payments, and then lastly, how to submit your monthly returns, your CIS monthly returns to HMRC. We'll then finish the training session with the automatic enrollment. Um, so we'll take a look at how to set up your pension scheme, all your, of your employee assessment, how to enroll employees, etc., and how BrightPay takes care of all the communications for you, and then how you can submit your files to your, your pension providers. So we'll get started with that today. We've got a good bit to get through there. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the training session, you do have the control panel there um, to the right-hand side there, and just fire away with your questions, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the session. So just to get started, um, I just have a slide here for you. If you haven't already downloaded BrightPay, um, you know, this is your first time looking at it, um, the software itself is... Um, downloaded from our website, brightpay.co.uk. If you slip on, um, click on the download link at the top of our website, um, this will take you through to the download page. We do two versions of BrightPay, one for Windows and one for Mac, so it's just really picking the relevant version that you need. So I'll just go back to our software now and we will get started. Okay, so we'll take a look first of all with the payroll functionality and what I'll just guide you through now is actually setting up your employer details, your company details for the first time and then entering some employees and, and then starting to process some payroll. So once you've installed BrightPay, um, you'll have the desktop icon there, simply double click in and this is the, the screen you'll be met with first of all, so we've no employers added um, in this example today. To get started, simply click on create new employer here and click on next, I'll just expand that for you there. Okay. So. First of all, you'll be asked how you would like to use BrightPay, and there's three options available to you. So if you're going to be starting from the beginning of the tax year, so back at the 6th of April, um, you're simply going to choose start at the beginning of the tax year. 
The second option you have is to start part way in the tax year. So for example, if it's a new entity um, starting mid-tax year, you've no previous payroll records for the tax year in question. This will be the option that you'll select here. And then thirdly, you have the option to continue part way in the tax year. This is the option you will be choosing um, if, you, for example, you have been using previous payroll software and you decide to move to BrightPay mid-tax year. And it's where you have existing payroll records for the tax year in question. So, if, so for example, now we're into June, you may have been using another software and you've already processed April and May payroll. So this will be the option you'll be selecting should you wish to bring over your, your cumulative pay information into BrightPay. So we'll, we'll choose the first option to start at the beginning of the tax year, and I'm going to click on Next. So all you need to do at this point is enter your employer information. I'm going to use a little cheat key here just to fill in um, some dummy information. So on the first screen, your employer name and address, nice and straightforward. On the second screen, then, your employer registration details. Um, so fill in as much as you can. You will need your POIE reference to be entered. That is a mandatory requirement. Um, also, for your RTI returns to go through, you will just need an accounts office reference number in as well. Just bear with me while I fill that in. Then you can instruct the software whether the company in question qualifies for, for small employers relief. And then something new for this tax year in our BrightPay software is um, if you have any benefits, any company benefits, um, whether you are payrolling them and whether you've signed up for that before the 6th of April this year or the P11D functionality, whether you're going to be using that instead. If I click on Next, um, BrightPay allows you to organize your employees into departments and an employees can be assigned to more than one department in any one pay period. If you would like to use departments, then you can set them up at this stage. Uh, just add a couple more in here. Alternatively, this can be left blank if you don't wish to use departments or you may want to revisit this later. Okay, I'm going to click on next. To speed things up for you, if you have typical employee settings that you would like to be used as default every time you set up a new employee, this is where you can set those defaults. So for example, if you're more than likely to always have your employees paid weekly in this particular company setup. You can instruct the software to always default that pay frequency for you, how they're to be paid, what their annual leave entitlement is, etc. Okay. Okay. At the time of setting up your employer details as well, if you have your staging date to hand for the company or if you may have already have staged, you can enter your staging date at this point. For example, I just advance it on there, so I just enter my staging date there. And then finally, you're asked whether you would like to password protect your employer files. So you can, if you wish, and if you wanted to, you just simply tick this button here, enter your password, and save and finish. Okay. At this stage, when you click on Save and Finish, this is where you have control over where you're going to save your employer files to. The software itself always runs from your machine, so it always gets installed to your C drive. And for each BrightPay license, you are allowed to put BrightPay onto five machines, so it can be activated five times. When saving and creating your employer files, which we're doing at this stage here, um, they are always saved away from your installation. So especially if you're in a bureau environment, this could be maybe on a server or a cloud, um, somewhere central really where, you know, if you've got more than one user who wishes to access the files, it's a central place for you to save to. So I'm just going to save my file here. And we've now set up the company and we're now into the company itself. Okay. So across the top, we have eight tab headings. Um, I'm just going to click into Employer here. And this is where you'll be able to view the information that we've just set up, as well as add in additional information relating to the employer. So you'll see here under Basic Information, that's my name and address details. Under Registration Details, again, is my PYE reference, etc. 
little bit more information you can pop in here um, for your RTI returns, for example. So if you have a corporation tax reference, if you're using direct backs, for example, this information can be entered here. Here are your typical employee settings again. So if you wanted to amend them at a later date, um, you can pop in here whenever you need to and make your change. And probably most importantly in the employer section is where you enter your user credentials for your RTI submissions. Okay. This is where um, you enter um, individual user credentials. Now, if you are um, acting as an agent um, and you're registered with HMRC as an agent to submit returns, what you can do instead of filling in this section is just pop to the file menu instead go into agent settings and it allows you to enter your agent RTI submission credentials and also your agent details here at the bottom and you only need to do that once so um, what you fill in here if you then set up another employer file um, these will flow through to, to each employer file that you set up so you'll only need to enter your user credentials once rather than on each employee um, on each employer level. So I'm just going to pop in some test credentials here, okay, and save changes. Also in the employer utility here, you'll see there are a number of menu headings across the top. And these are where you can set up what we call global items or employer items. Um, so for example, if I just click into addition types here, you'll see here that we've preset a few of these in for you. And basically any item that you set up here um, basically means that they will be available for selection across all your employees on all pay frequencies. So you may have weekly and monthly um, employees in one um, employer setup. Um, so if I was processing um, a pay slip for one employee, I'll be able to choose any of these um, without the need to set them up individually for the employee. So for example, if I just pop into hourly rates here and click on add new hourly rate, so it could be that I have a Sunday rate, for example. I can enter a rate here. I can specify whether it's an overtime rate or not. I can save that. And that hourly rate then when I'm processing each employee's pay slip will be available for selection. Um, across all employees, across all pay frequencies. Okay, and that applies to all of these um, um, menu types across the top. Um, under bank accounts here, this will allow you to um, set up employer bank details and then assign a bank payment file format for the bank account in question. Brightpay facilitates the preparation of um, bank files for upload into banking software. And if I just click on this little drop-down menu here, you'll see the banks that we can cater for. Okay, so I think we've got the majority of them covered. In the event that you discover one that we were not covering, simply give us a call. You know, it's something that um, usually if we just get the file specification in from the banking question, we can quickly bring it into the software for you. So all I would do here is set up my bank. For example, then choose the appropriate bank file format and click on save. Okay, you can add more than one employer bank account. For example, it may be that you have directors being paid from one bank account other employees from another. So you simply repeat the process. Where you are setting up more than one bank account for the employer, you can then instruct the software which is to be the primary one. So which one is the software to default to every time you go to pay your employees and you simply tick this box here. Okay, so that's the employer utility and like I say that can be accessed at any time um, should you wish to view, amend any details within this section. So the next step then um, is to actually set up your employee details and this can be done in a couple of ways. And so first of all, if we just click into the employee utility. So at the moment we have no employees added. So firstly, what I can do is click on add new employee and 
The first option I have is to actually set up my employee details manually. If that's um, the option I'm going to, you know, the, the route I'm going to go down, you simply have these six tab headings here, and it's really just a case of working through each of these sections and completing the relevant information. Again, I'm just going to use a little key here just to, to cheat. Yeah. Um, Okay, so on the personal screen, this is where the employee's personal information is entered, so their name, date of birth, their gender, address, etc. Um, Brightpay will alert you to mandatory items, so if you're missing, for example, a date of birth and you try and save the record, it will flag it to you that you are missing mandatory information. Okay, um, should you wish to email pay slips, P60s, etc. to employees, then the employee's email address can be entered here. And if you are going to be emailing um, pay slips or P60s, you can also password protect the, um, these documents so that the, the recipient will need the password to actually open and view them. Okay. Under the employment section here is where you can enter a works number, oh sorry, a works number, and also assign employees to departments. So for example, my employee here, I may wish to assign her to the admin department and also to marketing here. What you can do as well is set the weighting. So it could be that she spends 75% of her time um, of her, of her working week, for example, in the admin department and 25% in marketing. So I can adjust the weighting accordingly. Under the employment tab as well is where you instruct bright pay of the employee's annual leave um, entitlement. So when the leave year is to start, what method um, to calculate their entitlement on? Is it based on days? Is it based on hours, for, exa uh, for, ex for, sorry, for example? Also, how many leave days um, they're allowed in the year, for example, and also their typical working days. Okay. Under the startup leave section then, this is where you can enter the employee's start date. Um, so that can be a date outside of the tax year if you want to just make a note of when they started with you. And this is a section you'll also come to if the employee leaves you mid-tax year. This is where you'll come just to enter their leave date as and when required. Under the payment section then is um, where you can first of all choose the employee's pay frequency. So BrightPay caters for six pay frequencies, so you can see them there on the screen. So we cover weekly, fortnightly, four weekly, monthly, quarterly and yearly. Okay, so you simply choose the appropriate option. Then how the employee is to be paid. So is it to be a weekly basic amount? Is it to be based on a daily rate or an hourly rate? So you just choose a default option there. Then if you have a weekly amount, you can enter it accordingly. And also you can add further information if there is also an hourly rate, maybe for any overtime that's being done, or if there's any daily rates also to take into account. Then finally on this screen, you're simply going to choose their payment method, so be it cash, check, or credit transfer. If using credit transfer, this is where you can enter the employee's bank details. Um, and again, if you're going to be using a bank file um, for uploading to banking software, it's important to fill this section in because this is going to populate the bank file for you. The next section, probably the most important section, is the tax, NIC and RTI section. Um, so this is where the employee's revenue details are going to be entered. So first of all, their tax code. We always default to the, um, the current um, personal allowance tax goes to 1100L in this instance. Then the national insurance table. If you need assistance with this, you can always click on change table and use the little checklist and BrightPay will prompt you with the appropriate national insurance table letter to use here. Okay. Um, then if whether the employee has a student loan um, repayment to make and if so, whether it's um, a plan one or a plan two repayment, so you just select accordingly. And then if, if they are making a student loan repayment, if you have the start and stop date of it, that can be entered as well. The employee's national insurance number, if known, can be entered here. 
And again, um, if any of your employees are directors, this is the place where you will instruct BrightPay that they are a director. So if they are, simply tick the director button here. It will bring up a couple of extra boxes to complete. So if the directorship has started mid-tax year, you can enter the start of directorship date accordingly. And likewise, if the directorship ends in the middle of the tax year, you can pop in here and enter the end of directorship date as well. For directors, BrightPay always defaults to the annual basis for the calculation of national insurance. Um, should you wish to um, calculate NIC on the alternate basis, so kind of on a pay period by pay period basis, then you just need to tick the box here to use alternate method for calculating the director's NIC. Okay, I'll just untick that just for this employee in question. Um, within this section as well um, is some requirements for your FPS submissions. So first of all, your payroll ID. Um, BrightPay will automatically create a payroll ID for you. Um, so it will save you having to enter one of, of your choice here. Um, just something to bear in mind, if you are migrating from another software package and you are migrating mid-tax year, if you had payroll IDs in operation in your previous software, just make sure that the same payroll IDs go into BrightPay so that when your full payment submissions then get submitted through BrightPay, HMRC don't incorrectly think that they are new employees. They'll be able to match up payroll IDs from the previous software. Um, you then just need to um, specify what the employee's contracted hours per week are. Again, just a, an RTI requirement. Then if the employee is on an irregular payment pattern, so if you have any seasonal employees, somebody going out on maternity leave, sick leave, um, long term, for example, you can tick the bottom, uh, the bottom there. And then anybody who is um, drawing down the, their, their pension rights there, yeah, there's, a, there's a flexible drawdown, you can tick the button there and complete the relevant information. Finally, um, you have the HR section here. Um, Again, it's an optional section here, but if you have the information, by all means, complete it. To the employee's nationality, if you um, have any employees that have come from overseas and as part of a check, you've checked their passport, then you can enter their passport number here. And again, that will flow through to your RTI return for you. Um, job title, starting salary, etc. some basic HR information. Once complete, you can simply click on Save and that employee is now set up for you. If you're going to go down the manual route of setting up your employees, you then simply click on new employee again on the menu bar and repeat the process for the next employee. The second way of, bring, of basically getting your employee information into BrightPay is, um, is by using um, an import option instead. And there's a couple of options av available to you. Um, under the file menu, and under import export data you have a couple of options here so you can import employees from a csv file first of all or you can import employees from an fps file and i'll just go through the two of those with you so again i suppose this really does come into play if you have decided to move to brightpay maybe from another software um, package and you have employee information that you can export out of your previous package. Um, it just depends on the package you're using. Um, some payroll packages allow you to export employee information to a CSV file, or it could be that you can get your, your employee information to an Excel file, which can then be converted to a CSV file. CSV file import is the most compre comprehensive import that you can do because you can get a lot more information into it, you know, employees' bank details, email addresses, things like that. Um, so if your current software allows the export um, to CSV, then BrightPay can facilitate the import in. I have a CSV file set up here, so I'll just show you how it would work. So I'm just going to click on this option here browse to where my file is here ok 
Okay, and it brings my um, file information in for me. Just to save myself a little bit of time, I've done the matching up already, but what you would do, you would simply go through each column and choose what the data represents. So that's my title column, that's my first name, that's my surname, that's my address, line one, etc. Under options here as well, you can actually try um, and match columns to CSV header row titles. So BrightPay does its best to match up. So again, I've already done this once, but um, if I kind of have everything in the right format, I can see here that all my columns have been matched up correctly. I can say OK. It's going to untick the header row. When I click on import, my 10 employees are imported successfully for me. So it's a nice, a quick process. Um, if you can get the information from a previous software or from another source, then the information can be brought in quite quickly. And you can see there now that all my employees have come in to my employee section. Alternatively, um, Again, if you've been using a different software and you wish to move to BrightPay, we do facilitate the importing of employees from an FPS file. So if your previous software, um, you know, you've been putting full payment submissions through and they can be easily located in your previous software, you can use this option to browse to a previous full payment submission that you've done, select it and bring it in to BrightPay. That's um, a handy way of actually bringing in mid-year pay information as well, because it's obviously with a full payment submission, there's mid-year totals in for you. Just one disadvantage to a full payment submission import, um, just something to bear in mind, and I just mentioned it briefly there before, um, there may just still be a little bit of manual entry then required for each employee, for example, email addresses, bank details, simply because full payment submissions don't contain that kind of information. So it's maybe an option worth considering if there's not many employees to bring in and you have the time to then go through each employee record and update accordingly. Otherwise, we would recommend maybe doing the CSV file import instead. Okay. Just one other import that you can do as well, I'm just going to close this employer file. We do a very quick and seamless import from HMRC basic tools. That can be found on your BrightPay opening screen. And if I click on import employer, um, I can do import from HMRC basic POA, POA tools. I can do a mid-year import. So if I've been using HMRC basic tools already this tax year, I can bring across my employee details and mid-year pay information to date, or I can do an import at the start of the year, so simply bring across employee information. If this is the option I'm going to choose here, all I do is browse to my HMRC Basic Tools installation, and I locate the SQ Lite 3 file, click on open, and literally in the couple of seconds my employee information has come in for me here and any media totals this would be populated here so that's a nice quick import for you so if you do have any users using HMRC basic tools and um, that you know will speed things up for you there okay so I'll just return to our previous file here Okay, um, so those are the import options. Full instructions are on our website. If you press F1 on your keyboard at any time while you're in the BrightPay software, that will bring you through to our online documentation, and there are help files on all of these options here just to, to guide you through that. Okay, so once you have employees set up, you're ready to process your payroll. So I'm going to click into the payroll utility now. Um, when you first go to process payroll in BrightPay, you are, you are asked to set up your payment schedules. So I have employees in this um, employer data set who are to be paid weekly and monthly. So it's asking me to set up the schedules for both of these. So first of all, I'm asked what my weekly schedule is going to be. So it needs two pieces of information from me, what my weekly pay date is going to be and when I am paying for. So I'm going to say here that my first weekly pay date will be Friday the 8th of April. We'll, we'll go back to the beginning of the, the tax year here. And for the week ending. So it could be if you pay in arrears, this might be the week before. So you may just need to change that date. 
I'll just go back one day here and say that I'm paying for the 7th of April. And likewise, my monthly schedule here. So when my first pay date is going to be and for month ending on, and I'll say the last day again, just to keep it simple. But you have a huge choice of options there for when you are paying for. So if I click on continue, this now takes me through to the payroll utility. So this is my payroll preview screen, and I'm in, in the weekly side. You can see I've got these two schedule bars here. So this is my weekly payroll, and this is my monthly payroll, and I can simply just switch between the two here. So this is my payroll preview screen. So it's an overview of all my employees and totals at the bottom. So to process an employee's pay slip, I simply select the employee from the listing, and it takes me through to what we call the pay slip view. This is an employee who's being paid a weekly basic. You can see it here. Um, and what I can do here is I can just keep adding pay items as required. So it could be that she's also being paid an hourly pay, maybe for a little bit of overtime that she did. Um, and I can enter that accordingly. And I can keep adding and adding. OK. This lady I did assign to two departments. Um, so you'll see here where where there is a little what we call a spanner symbol or an edit symbol, um, that means that there's um, extra payroll functionality connected with the pay item in question. If I click on the spanner here, so you can see here that I've got my departmental weightings as I set them. I could change that so I could say, well, look, it was 50-50 this week. And I can set that back. Okay. Here I can also say, well, actually, no, I want to perform a net to gross calculation rather than a gross to net. Um, if a mid-period pay rise has taken place, I can pop in here, say when the pay rise is to apply from, and it will do a kind of a split um, calculation for you. Okay. And again, um, you can also instruct um, with pay items whether the, the pension, you know, especially with auto-enrollment, whether the pay item is to be taken into account for pension contributions or not. So you can tick and untick accordingly there. OK, um, I'll just pop back to statutory payments shortly. Um, any number of additions and deductions can also be applied to an employee's pay slip, simply clicking on Add. These here are our employer items that we saw in the employer utility that are available for, for all employees. So if any of these were to apply, I simply select it here, fill in the amount. OK, and again, where you have departments um, assigned again you could say well actually that full commission was on marketing only you can actually set the weighting per pay item here as well and again i may just have then um, an expense reimbursement as well here and i can reorder these then accordingly i can move them up i can and um, move them down as i as i need to there Okay. Over on the right hand side you have a live calculation so any amount that you type in it, the payslip will amend accordingly, so there's no save button as such that you need to be clicking. It's really as you type away, you'll see those items, um, you know, the, the tax and I say being calculated as, as accordingly for you. Okay. Any pay item you don't need, you can just simply delete as well, etc. So that's my first employee. Um, to then move on to the next, you simply select the next employee from the listing. This is an example of an employee this time being paid by the hour. Um, so say he's to be paid, we'll just say 20 hours here. This is his standard rate that I set up on his employee record. If I need to, I can convert that. So it could be then that, um, you know, that was his standard rate. And he may then have done, say, 10 hours then at double time. And I have the option here just to then amend that to be a double time rate as well. Likewise, I can click here, I can, there's my employer item that I set up, so we could have done some work on the Sunday, pay him a couple of hours there as well. Um, for hourly paid employees as well, if they are assigned to departments, I'll just set him to a department there. And um, for hourly rates, you simply then instruct in the software um, which department everything relates to. So it's the hours that will flow through rather than a percentage weighting as such. Okay, and again, 
an unlimited number of pay items can be added, additions, deductions, etc. Lastly, my next employee here is just an example of somebody who's being paid a daily rate here. And you'll see here she's being paid five days at her standard rate here. If I click on calendar, I can see here that she's down to be working a five-day week. If I unticked this day here and marked it as a non-work day, you'll see that it's an automatic calculation that she's only worked four days this week. Um, and, you know, and it will amend it accordingly for you. Once you've worked through each employee, if I then return to the weekly summary, there's my overview. So I suppose this really is a final check before you finalize the pay period. This report, um, if I just click on the more menu, can be printed or exported to PDF. So if you wish to just send this to a client before you finalize the pay period just for them to check over, this would be the option you can choose. Um, it can be saved to PDF and emailed accordingly. Once you're ready to finalize the pay period, all you need to do then is click on finalize pay slips on the menu bar. If you are ready to finalize all employees, simply tick them all and click on OK. If maybe you're waiting to um, find out some pay information for somebody and you think, oh, look, I need to just get, go get ahead of myself and I just want to go ahead and finalize everybody else, you can actually untick those that you don't want to update. Click on OK and it will leave them still open in the pay period. And you'll see here now that I've got two little head and shoulders symbols just to tell me that I've got pay slips open in week one and also in week two here. Um, then when you do have the information in week one, you can pop back in and finalize accordingly. Okay, and say okay. When you finalize pay slips, you then will be given the option on the menu bar to either print them to email them or to export to PDF depending on your requirements. If I'm going to print them, I'm going to click on print pay slips here. Okay, and all my employees are available for selection. The options menu here on the right hand side, side allows you just to customize the pay slip to suit your own needs. Obviously, we need to cover the mandatory requirements, but you can add extra information and you can remove a few things as well. So for example, you may want to actually add the employer um, address onto the payslip. Okay. Also maybe to show annual leave remaining. Um, but you may not wish to show the bright pay logo, for example, you know, if you've got the employer logo showing instead. So if I just do a print preview, there's the payslips um, view for you there here. Okay, and they are ready for printing there. Okay. Um, likewise, if you wish to email the pay slips, um, what BrightPay will do is it will only bring up those employees for whom you have email addresses and so you can see here that I've got four employees who have a valid email address. Again, I have the options menu, so if I just want to customize the pay slips slightly there. And I would literally, sorry, literally just enter in a reply to email address and click send emails. And they actually come to a BrightPay email server and they then get sent on and deleted then from our server there. Okay, they usually batch within an hour. Um, most people get them within a couple of minutes, but um, usually we just say just allow an hour just in case. Okay. And likewise, you can export your pay slips too. So, if, so, for example, if you wish to send them to a client, first of all, rather than to individual employees, you can use the export pay slip option here as well um, and simply click on export, save to a location of your choice on your PC and then attach to an email there. Okay. When you finalize each um, pay period, you'll see then that I now have a number one next to my RTI section. And if I click in here, as soon as I click on finalize pay slips, BrightPay will automatically produce your full payment submission for submission to HMRC. And the number one basically is just to inform me that that submission is still outstanding. So all I need to do is select it here, okay. The contents of the full payment submission are in a readable format for you. And again, this, this can be printed, exported at any time um, if you wanted a, a record to send on to somebody. Um, and as long as you have your user credentials in, all you need to do is click send now to submit. 
obviously I'm processing week one of the, the 16, 17 tax years, so it's telling me that I'm late. Um, in the event that I was late, I can literally then select my reason and click send now. So reasonable excuse, for example, you, you just select the reasoning question and send now. Just because I'm in a test environment now, obviously I can't submit this, so I'm just going to tell BrightPay that I have sent it and it has been accepted by HMRC. Okay, and you'll see here now that I have no outstanding returns there. Okay, so we just pop back into payroll here. So then all you need to do then is click into week two and you're ready to process your week two payroll. Just to bring to your attention that I don't have probably enough time today to go through everything, but you will find extra options in terms of payroll functionality under the more menu here. And if I click here, for example, you can import pay records from CSV files. So um, if you're sent maybe timesheets, for example, and they're in Excel or CSV file format, they can be brought into BrightPay. You can also zeroize pay slips as well. BrightPay will always bring forward the pay information that was in the pay period before. If that's something that you don't want, you can pop into here and actually zero-wise um, your pay slips accordingly. So it may be that you always wish to reset your hourly paid employees. So I can come in here and say just zero-wise all the hourly pay for everybody. Click on OK. And you'll see here that my Ronan Burton, who is paid by the hour, I can have a fresh start with him in terms of entering his hours. Um, you have a few options there if there's maybe a set deduction or an addition or a note that you want to add to and basically more than one pay slip just to speed things up for you. You have a few options there to do that all in one go. You can also prepay um, pay. So somebody going on holiday next week, for example, and they want to be paid in advance, you can use the prepay option to pay the following week. And also to switch an employee's pay frequency as well. Um, so maybe you have a weekly employee and they wish to be switched to monthly. You can use the dedicated switch facility to move them across to a different pay frequency there. Statutory payments are all covered in BrightPay. So, for example, um, just take this lady here. So, we may have a lady going out on maternity leave, for example. So, I will just show you quickly. So, we just click into the calendar. So you just simply select the start of leave date and click on parenting leave and the relevant option there. So you, we, have, we cover all the statutory leaves. Um, so in this instance, I'll just select maternity leave. Um, enter the start of leave date and complete all the information accordingly that BrightPay is asking you for and click on save here. And that will apply the maternity leave period in the, the payroll functionality for you. In this example, I just don't have enough historical information for the, um, to determine the average weekly earnings. So I'm just going to manually override that here. And you'll see now that the employee's um, maternity pay is kicking in for you. Okay. Likewise, an employee who maybe is out sick, um, I'll just select this lady here okay so it could be that she's out sick this week here so simply click highlight the days on the calendar click sick leave and again I just don't have enough historical information in so I can just manually override it and BrightPay will do the automatic calculation for you there Attachment orders as well are covered and um, we cover all the main attachment orders and they're easily applied by clicking on add Click on attachment order there and you'll see here, this is the listing of the attachment orders that we cover there. I'll just quickly set one up for you here. I'll do an account or tax one for you. Okay, so you're just filling in the relevant information. Okay. Okay, click on save. And you'll see then as, um, as per the information you've entered, it will flow through accordingly in line with the, the tables maybe, depending whether it's a percentage basis or a fixed amount basis there for you. Okay, and again, you would simply finalize payslips and submit your RTI submission.
there. And again, I'll just mark that as sent for you. Okay. As you're processing your payroll, the HMRC payment section of the software is keeping a constant track of what you owe to HMRC. And you can click into this facility at any time. I'm just going to click into HMRC payments now for you. So when you first access this utility, you are just asked how you remit to HMRC. So is it on a monthly or a quarterly schedule? So I'm just going to say monthly and click continue here. Um, it will default to the month according to the day um, here. I'm just going to go back a month because just we're starting at the, the start of the tax year in terms of our example today. So this is our month one overview. Um, so this is my tax summary, uh, my NIC and my overall amount due at the bottom. Okay. If required, you just need to fill in any extra amount. So, for example, if you've suffered any CIS deductions, you can enter the amount in here. Okay. And this is also where you'll come to actually um, trigger any employment allowance. So, if you are eligible for the employment allowance, your £3,000 um, to put against your employer NIC, this is where you'll come. You'll click on Enable. You'll prepare an EPS here. Okay, you'll submit your EPS to HMRC. I just then return to the HMRC payment section again. I click on enable again. Answer the question, so am I operating a multiple POA scheme? If I say no, that will allocate the full £3,000 to this, um, this um, POA scheme for me. Click on OK and the system will then keep an automatic track of your employer NIC and will deduct it accordingly from the amount due to HMRC. Where you have statutory payments to recover, CAS deductions to recover, um, for example, BrightPay will then indicate to you that you will need to submit an EPS for, um, for you to basically inform HMRC of these deductions. Um, all you need to do then at the prompt is click on send now. Okay, and that will automatically create your employer payment summary for you for submission. So you can see here over on the right hand side is my tax month one, that's my SMP to recover, um, any NIC compensation and my CES deduction suffered there. And again, I literally click on send now there. And again, just because we're in this test environment, I'll just mark it as sent and accepted by HMRC. Back in the HMRC payment section then you have access to the P30 here and again this can be sent on to any clients you may have, it can be printed, it can be exported to PDF so it's your employer pay slip. So this is going to contain your breakdown of your liability. At the bottom as well there's just instruction of when the payment should be reaching HMRC by and also which account to pay and um, we have the and main HMRC Cumberland Old Account details on there for you. Okay. And then you also have your P32 employer payment record here. This is your full 12 months breakdown, all on the one um, report for you there. So that can be accessed as well at any time. Okay. Once you've paid HMRC, you can just keep a track of your payments in BrightPay. So say this is my, my amount due for tax month one. Can make a note of that, I can make a note of when I paid it and save changes there and BrightPay will then keep a track then of what you are, you're, you're, you're keeping a constant track then okay, and, and up to date. At any time for your own reporting needs you can pop into the analysis function of the software as well. Um, Within analysis, there's a couple of options available to you. So on the menu bar, we have, first of all, what's what we call saved reports, or in other words, um, favorite reports. So these are preset into BrightPay for you already. They're probably the most commonly used reports that we have. Um, so for example, you may pop in here and say, right, okay, I want to do a payroll summary for um, week two. And you can pop in here, click on payroll summary, and it will always default to the last pay period that was updated for the pay frequency. Um, so you have choice over the period type. So if you wanted just to do kind of a tax year overview, you can, or change it to tax months, for example. 
Um, I'll just do an employer week one here. You can also then say whether you want to just report on employees, just on departments, or both employee and department totals as well. Here. You can then select which employees you wish to include and also which column information to include. So obviously this, this is an example of a preset one. So I could simply say, right, okay, I'm happy with that. I'll run the report and there's my report on screen. If I wanted to now edit that, I can click on the edit button and I could say, well, I actually just want to remove um, take home pay, for example and run report again and it will be updated according to your your new criteria there okay more than one report can be opened at any time so i can click for example on employee details run report and they can be run alongside one another and any number of reports can be opened together there in the event that you want to create your own reports you will simply use the new option on the menu bar and say, for example, you want to do a payroll report here, I can click on this option here, and you'll simply select all your criteria um, as per your requirements. So, for example, I might just want to run a report on national insurance numbers, for example. So, I can give my report a name. I can say it's for the tax year, just to include all weekly and monthly employees. Um, I can then click into add and remove columns here and then clear down the current selection and then select what I wish to include. So name, surname and national insurance number. Click on OK, run report and my report is then generated for me. If it is a report that you are going to be using regularly, you can then click on save. Okay. Give the report the name of your choice and you can add it as a favourite. And that means then it will be added to your saved report so it's um, for ease of use the next time you come into the analysis function. All reports then can be managed. Um, so if there's any reports that you think, well, I'm never going to need that, you can actually come in here and delete them. Um, you can indicate whether it's to show in the toolbar at the top or not, for example. Okay, and all reports as well, they can be printed and they can be exported to Excel, to CSV, to clipboard or as a PDF document as well. So you have full flexibility here um, in the anal analysis function um, so you can create and save reports as and when required. Okay. So that covers the payroll functionality, just a general overview. There's probably a lot more I could go into, but just with time today. Um, if you have any questions on the payroll functionality, just you know, pop them into the control panel just on the right-hand side there. Um, and, or alternatively, um, I can maybe get back to you if you wanted to give us a ring after the, the webinar. If you have any further questions, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Okay. And I just want to move on then to the CIS functionality in BrightPay. This is a new feature in the software this year. Okay, so you, we have a dedicated section. Um, so if I just click into CIS for you here. Okay, so the CIS functionality is for the construction industry scheme. Um, this can be run as a standalone in BrightPay, so it doesn't, you know, you don't necessarily have to be using the payroll functionality at all. You can simply have a CIS company that you wish to run. So it's, it's purely standalone um, and is not linked at all to any of these sections here. In CIS then, um, the first thing you will need to do is set up your contractor details. And if I just click into this option here, okay. First of all, um, just complete your accounts office reference. A lot will be populated from this employer utilities because if you are running it alongside employees as well, um, some of the details will be the same. So my accounts office reference is flowing through from here. And also then complete your unique tax reference number as well. So again, I'll just pop a dummy number in here. Okay. If you have specific credentials for CIS, um, then these need to be entered here as well. Otherwise, your employer credentials, again, from within the employer utility, your RTI submission credentials there will be used. So if they are different for any CIS submissions, they can be entered here. Um, I'll just enter one in here. 
Okay. And then again, you can just set some default settings for your subcontractors. So for CAS, we offer two pay frequencies, tax weekly or tax monthly. So again, you can just instruct the software to default to a certain setting here. And also how you typically pay your subcontractors, is it by cash, check or credit transfer? So we'll just make it simple here. We'll just use check here and click save. Okay. Once you have your contractor details entered, you are then ready to enter your subcontractor details. And that's done by clicking on the subcontractor menu here and clicking on new. Again, you can manually enter your subcontractor details or you can perform an import as well. Under the file menu, you'll see we offer an option to import subcontractors from a CSV file as well. So again, that's an option to bear in mind. However, if you're going to manually set them up, you're simply completing the four tab headings with the information required. Again, I'm just going to use a little cheat key here just to auto-populate the fields for me. So you simply ask for trading name, what type of business they are, they sole trade a company, partnership or a trust, what their UTR is, what their national insurance number is if applicable, and again, whether they're registered for VAT. I'll pop back to this section just in a second, the verification section. Under additional details then, um, works number, password, if you're going to be emailing their payment and deduction statement to them, um, whether you wish to assign to departments, maybe projects, jobs, for example, and then their address details. Under payment then, just whether they're to be paid tax weekly or monthly. And what you can do as well, if it's a subcontractor that's not necessarily going to be with you for the full tax year, you can also specify a range of months. You may only want to pay them from month one to month three, and then they won't be with you again for the rest of the year. Okay. Then the hourly rates, daily rates, and payment method, they can be completed accordingly. Okay. And then a note section just for any additional notes. And click on save there. Okay. And I'll just quickly set up a second one here. Okay, and save there. Okay, so with any subcontractor, if you need to verify them with HMRC, Brightpay can um, submit a verification request for you, and that's done by clicking on the verify button on the menu bar. Simply select the subcontracts that you wish to include in the request, click on OK, and you can, again, similar to an RTI submission, you're going to click on send now to submit that verification request to HMRC. I'll just click it here. This should give us back some dummy results, so just bear with me there while it goes through. Okay. Once HMRC has received the information, the file has been successfully received, it will then send you back the information that you require. And it will tell you now that um, do you wish to update the contracts with the tax payment statuses and verification numbers in the CAS verification response. And so basically to update each subcontractor record um, accordingly, you simply click on update subcontractors and that will then fill in this section here. Now that was just a test submission. Um, so what would happen is that this would all be filled in for you. I'm just going to pretend here that it has gone through for you. Okay. This information would all come in for you here like so and save there and you'll then get confirmation that they have been verified. Okay. Once um, that's all completed and you're ready to make payments to the subcontractors, just simply click into the Payments Utility. You'll see here I'm in Tax Month 1. Select my first subcontractor and complete the information that you need. So, first of all, their basic pay, what's their gross pay? Okay, for example, was there any materials to take into account? Um, if any VAT, what was the amount of the VAT, for example, um, and whether there's any additions and deductions. So complete the employee's payment um, slip um, as per your requirements. Here's my next employee. So again, just fill this in here for you. Okay. 
And then once you have all your payments completed, simply click on Finalize Payments. Click on OK. So the, the system will prompt me then, um, it now knows that I've updated tax month one, so it's now prompting me to make a submission for, um, for tax month one, my CAS 300 submission. Um, I can say yes here. And that will actually take me back through to the submission screen and I can just simply complete the declarations as required, click on OK and I can send that to HMRC, I can submit that to HMRC and that's my CAS 300 return submitted to them. Just let that run through there. Okay, and I've got confirmation back that that's been successfully received from HMRC. Okay, um, once you've finalised payments to subcontractors, BrightPay will then automatically produce your P&D statement for them, so your payment and deduction statement to give to them. These can be printed, they can be exported or emailed um, to the subcontractor as required. So I just do a print preview for you here. Our payment and deduction statement is using HMRC's template um, and again this can be printed, exported as required there. Okay. Likewise you can also use BrightPay to um, pay some contractors um, electronically so if you wish to prepare a bank file you can do so. Um, so by simply clicking credit transfer here and clicking on bank file Otherwise, this pay subcontractors section is just going to give you a breakdown of payments. Um, so this, these are check payments. It, can tell, it tells me the amounts I need to pay. Okay, so that's the CIS functionality. Um, where you have employees um, as well, um, as well as CIS, if I just pop back into the HMRC payments section, if you have processed any CIS payments, this screen here will be automatically populated with any CAS deductions as well. So this should give you a final, final overview of your liability to HMRC. So CAS deductions will flow through to HMRC payments for you. Okay. So that's the CIS functionality as well for you. Um, again, if you have any questions on that part of the software, feel free just to um, pop your questions into the control panel there. Okay, just to finish off then, I'll now just show you the automatic enrollment um, functionality in BrightPay. Very topical, an awful lot of people staging. Um, so we'll now move on to that part of the training. Okay, um, I'm just going to close this company down here and just bring in a fresh one for you. So just bear with me. Okay, so just a nice clean company just to, to show you. Okay, so in this example company, um, I'm going to assume that the employer is staging on the 1st of May 2016. Okay, so your starting point with auto enrollment is basically as soon as you have your staging date, um, get that entered into the software and that means then that BrightPay knows when to kick in with your automatic enrollment duties. Okay, Your staging date then is entered within the pensions utility. You may have entered it at the time of setting up your company as well. Otherwise if you didn't you can pop into the pensions utility at any time, click on automatic enrollment and enter your staging date here. A useful feature in BrightPay as well, if you're not sure of your staging date, um, you can pop into the automatic enrollment utility and also connect to the pension regulator website um, and this will retrieve your staging date for you. It will use the PYE number that you have entered in the software. Um, so if you're not sure, then you can um, use this link here to get the staging date in for you. Okay. So I've got my 1st of May 2016 entered here. So once I reach that date in the payroll, BrightPay will kick in with my automatic enrollment alerts for me. Okay. BrightPay um, currently supports 16 pension providers and they're just there on the screen for you. You can see the names of the ones that we, we currently support. 
Where we say that we currently support them, that simply means that Brightpay can do the full process for you up to and including the point of producing the files that need to be submitted to the pension provider every pay period. So your contribution files and where applicable um, an enrollment file should the pension provider need one of those. Okay. Um, where we don't offer dedicated support for a pension scheme, all's not lost, you can use the other automatic enrollment scheme option on the right hand side to set up the pension scheme yourself in RightPay. Just one thing to bear in mind though, that won't produce the actual files for upload into the, the, the pension provider in question. So that would have to be something that would be done manually um, by the user. Okay. This example today then, I'll just use Nest um, as the popular choice, so we'll just use Nest here. So to set up your pension scheme details, once you have selected a pension provider, simply click on the option here. On the first screen then, just simply enter your registration details. Okay, so these would all be given to you by the pension provider when you're setting up with them. And under group details then, set up details of the different groups, again, that you've set up with the pension provider. So at this point, you should have all this information to hand. So a group, for example, um, especially if we're looking at Nest, um, this would be a, a group name that you assign to a set of employees. You may have weekly paid employees, you may have monthly paid employees, so you may have set up two groups. Um, for each pay frequency within your Nest online accounts. We copy that we have weekly here, okay, and also monthly. It could be that you have employees on the same pay frequency, but maybe with different contribution rates as well. Some employees may be, be paying more into um, the pension scheme than others. So again, you would have more than one group set up to accommodate this. When setting up your group details here, you can then instruct BrightPay um, what contribution rates you've set up with the pension provider. So whether you're using the phased minimum rates, which is currently 1% employee, 1% employer, or whether you want to just go straight to the 2018 minimum rates, excuse me that, um, or whether you wish to customize your rates. You may have actually set up um, your own um, customized rates and again you can amend that accordingly here you could simply just type type in the amounts that you want here okay you then need to then tell BrightPay the earnings basis so are you using the standard AE qualifying earnings levels for example the lower limit is 5,824 5, pounds um, that's the annual so 112 a week um, so any amount up to that point is exempt from the pension, um, so it's only amounts above that. And also the um, upper limit um, of 43,000 as well. Um, so you just need to instruct by pay whether you wish those um, limits to apply or whether you wish to customize these. So if you've set up your pension scheme and you, you're, you've agreed not to have any limits, you can again remove the limits here and then the pension deduction will be on the employee's full pay with no exemptions. Okay, once you've selected your contribution type and also your earnings basis and then set up any further groups, simply click on save and your pension scheme details are now entered in BrightPay for you. Okay, a useful feature in BrightPay, especially for bureaus, um, is the assessment report that we offer um, and this if you are pre-staging, so if your staging date for your client is coming up shortly, the assessment report here just allows you to do a pre-assessment review. Okay, my staging date here in this example is the 1st of May and um, I've got some weekly paid employees that are currently still sitting in April. So this is just going to give me an overview here of what staging is likely to look like for me when the 1st of May falls in my payroll. So you can see here that it does um, an estimated assessment of each employee's worker category, so whether they're likely to be assessed as eligible, non-eligible or entitled workers, what their qualifying earnings are likely to be, 
and also then the estimated employee contributions and employer contributions. So this is a useful document just to send over to clients just to give them an idea of what their costs are going to be, for example, when staging falls. The same assessment report also just includes a general document um, about auto-enrolment, so what the three worker categories are and when each of those categories come into play. Um, and also then what the qualifying earnings are. So those are the limits we've just mentioned there. So again, it's a, just a useful document to send as a whole, both the pre-assessment and the general assessment guide as well. Okay, so I have my scheme details set up. I have my staging date entered. So I'm just going to return back to the payroll utility. I'm just going to finalize this pay period here. And that should then take me into the pay period in which the 1st of May is falling for me. You'll now see that because I have the 1st of May entered as my staging date, I'm now getting these flags appear here. And also these yellow alerts. If I go on to each employee, they all have a yellow alert. So that is now Bright Pay kicking in to inform you that you now have auto enrollment duties to perform. Okay. My first employee then is being assessed this time as an eligible job holder. So BrightPay will automatically assess your employees for you. You don't need to do that yourself. So it will assess them either as eligible, this gentleman is non-eligible, or an, an entitled worker. So my first employee is being assessed as an eligible job holder. And if I click on View Options, this will then bring me through to the actions that are available for this worker category. So this employee, um, I can either enroll her, I can postpone her, or I can mark as exempt if that were applicable. So if I'm going to enroll her, I'm going to click on the enroll button, make sure the enrollment date is as I need it to be, and I select then my scheme from the drop down here. So she's a weekly employee. I'm going to pop her into my weekly Nest group. I then select the applicable tax relief. So Nest operates as relief at source. Okay, and if I just want to enroll that one employee, I can click continue. Or again, just to speed things up, especially if there's a good lot of employees that you need to enroll, I can select this option here to enroll multiple employees with the same settings. So if I have a good few weekly employees, all to go into that one nest scheme and all tax relief at source, I click on this link here, select all my employees and I click enroll selected employees. Those employees have all been enrolled all at the same time for you. So it's um, made things a little bit faster for you. Once employees have been enrolled, um, BrightPay will then automatically prepare your communications for you. So every employee that is enrolled requires an enrollment letter. And to prepare these then, um, you simply click on the letter option here. So all enrollment letters, they can be printed, they can be exported to PDF, or they can again be emailed directly from BrightPay to the employee, just like a payslip um, or a P60, um, exactly the same way as they get emailed. Again, to speed things up, if you've enrolled a number of employees all at the same time, I can do this in a batch run. So I can click on to create or send a letter for multiple employees. I'm going to just print it there, here. Should you choose to print or export the letters, then you can then um, add a signatory on, you can then control paper size, margins, etc. For example, if you had headed paper, and if I just do a print preview here, this is um, one of our employees' enrollment letters. So our letter templates are following the pensions regulators April 2015 template, so they are up to date with the pensions regulator and cover all the requirements for the enrollment letters. So it's going to include information on the employee's staging date, what their contributions are going to be, how they can opt out if they want to, and just some general information about automatic enrollment there. Okay. Once the employee or employees are in receipt of these letters, all you then need to do is mark as done. So again, you can do it on an individual basis or for multiple employees. I just click continue there. 
And if I just return back to the payroll screen now, you'll see that the flags have appeared against those five employees because I've now dealt with their AE requirements, my AE duty for them. Um, just taking the next employee then, this is an example of a non-eligible job holder. And if I click on view options here, there's four actions available for, for, for this category. So to write to them, um, letting them know that they can opt into the scheme if they would like to, um, then to opt them in if they come back to and, and request that option, to postpone them or to mark as exempt. And likewise, for an entitled worker, we have similar options, again, to write to them. So you have an obligation to write to both entitled workers and non-eligible job holders, letting them know that they can join or opt into a scheme. Um, should the entitled worker choose to join the scheme, there's the join option. It takes you through the, the process of, of um, putting them through into the pension to postpone or mark as exempt. So BrightPay can also postpone employees, as you can see here. So should you wish to postpone one or more or all of your employees, then simply click the postpone button. You then need to enter a deferral date. So you can postpone for up to three months, and there will be a check on that. BrightPay will check the date for you. And again, if you wish to batch postpone employees, you can use this quicker option to postpone for, um, for multiple employees. We select all postpone and all those employees are now postponed accordingly and will be reassessed back on the, the 1st of August. Again, if you do postpone employees, you are obliged to give um, employees a postponement letter. So if I click on the letter option here, again, it can be printed, exported to PDF or emailed. And again, once um, employees are in receipt of their postponement notice, you can mark as done here. Press continue. Okay, and when I return now to my payroll utility, you'll see that all my flags have disappeared, so I've dealt with all my AE duties at this point in time. So if I just show you now, this is an employee that I enrolled. So for any employee that um, gets enrolled or um, joins or opts in, um, once you've processed them, you'll then see that their pension deductions will flow through onto their payslip and will remain there, there on. Um, and if I just finalize pay slips here and just do a print preview for you, you'll see that the um, pay slips will also um, refer to any pension deduction as well made by the employees. So the pay slips will um, document that for, for you there. Okay. Once you have staged and you've completed your first pay period, um, as mentioned just a little bit earlier, where we offer dedicated support for a pension scheme, it means that we can do the relevant file production for you for upload into the relevant pension scheme. You'll see here now under my pensions um, utility, I, ha I have the number two, and that's telling me that I now have two files outstanding for submission. So if I click into the pensions utility here, Okay, so I'm using Nest in this example. Nest are a pension provider that first of all need an enrollment file to let them know of new members coming on board to them, and then a contributions file then every pay period they're on. So if I pop into here, so under edit details and groups here, now Nest and also Smart Pension um, are two pension providers that we support and they offer what is known as an API option. By API, it means that basically you can submit your um, files directly from BrightPay into the pension provider themselves. There's no requirement to save the file first um, and then upload it separately into your online pension account. The other fortune providers that is necessary and it's not a, it's not um, a difficulty as such, it's just that extra step that you need to save the file and then um, upload it. So it's kind of a two-step process for the other 14 providers. For Nest and Smart Pension, however, it's really like submitting an RTI return in that you literally click a Send Now button and it will go straight from BrightPay into the pension provider. 
So I'll just show you how that Nest API um, option works. So submission method for Nest, you're going to select Nest Web Service, enter your user credentials. So these would be your Nest online um, credentials, you know, that you use to log into your Nest account. Okay, save changes. They require an enrollment um, file. First of all, so I'm going to click into enrollment summary here. I'm then prompted to send my enrollment submission. I'm going to click on that option here. And it's then a three-step process. So step one, select the employees you wish to enroll. Click on next. Just enter any additional employee information, for example, your payment source. Okay, your enrollment type and whether the employee is an overseas national awaiting an NI number. Click on next and at this stage you're simply clicking send now. So, so as mentioned, it's very similar to an RTI submission going through. With Nest, it may just take a little bit of time to get your response back. Um, again, just because we're in a test environment, I can't submit this. But once submitted, you'll then get an update here at the top right to let you know that the file has been successfully received. Do give that a little bit of time. Um, it can take 20 minutes and we do know for files that have maybe 50 or more employees it can take a couple of hours. So it's, it's important not just to sit there and wait, you know, do um, kind of if you need to walk away do um, and you'll see that update come in accordingly as and when. Likewise then every pay period after you have staged for which you have employees enrolled um, you do need to then submit a contributions file and that's done in exactly the same way. I'm going to click on contribution summary here, click on send submission for my week five, fill in your payment information, again this will all come from Nest and it just needs to match exactly, okay, step two, select the employees that you are going to include in your contributions file, at step three, um, this is just to notify in this instance Nest of um, any reason for any partial or non-payment of contributions, for example, an employee may have left, and so you can just select that as the reason, and then Nest know not to expect any contributions going forward from that employee. Click on Next, and then again, send now to submit that um, contributions file to the pension provider. Okay, and again, just allow a little bit of time to get your confirmation receipt back in at the, the right-hand side of this screen there okay so going forward then you'll just continue to process your payroll and submit a contributions file to the pension provider that you're using um, after each pay period is done okay brightpay will continue to monitor employees for you so if um, maybe you have an employee who turns 22 with qualifying earnings and um, you may have a new starter um, so there's various reasons. It could be that you, yeah, somebody's um, earnings have just suddenly crossed the threshold, you know, of the earnings trigger. So where um, BrightPay sees a change and where there is a change in status in worker category, that will be flagged up to you and you'll see then on screen alerts then appearing. So for example, if I just set up a new employee here, um, just do it very quickly. I return to the payroll screen here this is my new employee and because she's new I'm now getting the flag to say that I do have an AE duty to perform for her as well so there will be constant monitoring of employees after staging for you okay BrightPay can also handle opt-out requests so should an employee be enrolled and they subsequently choose to opt out and you, re you actually then receive an opt-out notice from the pension provider Opt-outs are handled automatically in BrightPay. All you need to do is access the employee's record here and their automatic enrollment utility and select their opt-out button here. Okay, enter the opt-out date and if you've been given an opt-out reference that can be entered as well. Press continue. And are you sure you wish to opt-out? You can say yes. And basically then if I just go into the next pay period, so the next open pay period, 
if the employee has already made contributions um, and then has opted out, you'll see then that they will be automatically refunded any contributions made to date there if they're still in that opt-out period. And likewise, the employer pension contribution amount will be shown as a refund to there. Okay. And then finalize pay slips. Okay. So um, at any time, if you would like to produce your own automatic enrollment reports, again, similar to the payroll, um, you can use the analysis function to, to do that. So you can, you can access the analysis function at any time. And if I click on new there and into payroll report, um, just show you what you can do. So, if, so for example, if I just go to this option here, you can see then, you know, you may wish to say, well, I wish to re run a report on AE worker category. Um, opt-in dates, opt-out dates, etc. So you have a few AE options there for your reporting. Also under employer items, you may want to just do your own contributions report as well. So I could say, you know, select the options to run a weekly contributions report for myself and click on OK. And that would then come through to report. And again, you can then save that report for future use there. OK. Um, just to finish off then, just under the pensions utility, the assessment report then that I just showed you that can do a pre-assessment can also do a post-assessment for you. So once you have staged, if you click into the assessment report, this is going to give you now a post-assessment breakdown. So here you can see here, these are my weekly employees, they've staged. So it would just tell me how they were assessed, um, on what date they were assessed, etc. Um, and again, this is probably a useful document you can use to complete your declaration of compliance, which is due um, within five months of stage, and you just need to, to complete that online for the pensions regulator. So it's a, a document that can be used to assist with that there. Okay. I think that just about covers, I'm just conscious of time that our 90 minutes is nearly up there. So I think we're pretty, Karen's just going to come back in here just in case you have any questions. Okay, guys, just give us a minute here. We'll just get set up for questions. And if you do have any questions, please type them into the question bar and just give us one minute and then we'll go through the questions. We'll be back. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're back online now. So the first question that we have is from Jacob. Um, I do not have an agent's setting option in my drop-down menu. Um, and he's re referring to the Bureau license. Yeah, sorry, Jacob, I should just point out, you've an upgrade coming, releasing an upgrade. I think if it doesn't go out this week, it should be next week, and that will have that option. I'm just working from an in-house version that we have, but it's literally due to, to be issued publicly to you all. Um, so, yes, so that will be, be coming to you. That's why you can't see it at the moment on your own. Okay, thank you. Another question from Lisa. Um, can you email to the employer if you are acting as an agent? I think she was referring there to the pay slips, Vicky. Yeah, you can. Um, it's a question actually I think is repeated as well by somebody else. Um, you can. Uh, if it's the pay slips you're, you're talking about, there's a couple of options available. What you can do in each employee record is put the employer email address in instead of the employee email address. And then when you're doing using the email pay slips function, they'll all go individually to the employer instead. Alternatively, you could, if you wanted to, export um, the um, pay slips to PDF and then do one attachment as a separate, you know, a separate attachment away from BrightPay mm -hmm. and send them that way. So there's a couple of options there, just depending on, on what you need. Okay, thanks, Vicky. Um, a question there first from Samantha. Um, if you need to make an amendment to payroll and then resubmit the RTI, how is this done? Okay, can I, I can probably just show you that, Samantha, actually. Am I okay, Karen, just going back yeah. to the, yeah, you're not going to switch just, anything. No, just bear with us there, just go back to the software there. Yeah, um, yeah, any corrections are easily performed. If I just go back into payroll now, just bear with me, I'm just going to mark these as done just so I can show you. Okay, so say I've made a mistake in this pay period here and I need to reopen and I've already submitted the RTI. Um, so in the payroll utility, you simply click on reopen payslips. 
select the employee or employees that you wish to um, make a change to. So I'll just do that lady there. Okay, and I made my change to say she's only getting 400. I then refinalize the pay slip back up. Now, obviously, because you've put your RTI through for that pay period, I'm not going to get a new RTI submission for sending. What I can do instead um, is, click, is, is go to the RTI section, click on New, and do an additional FPS. So that's to report any interim changes to year-to-date figures. If I click on that option there, I can just do Select None and just select the one employee that I have made a change to. And it's then correction to earlier submission. Click on OK, and that will submit my amendment. So that's the, the, the way to, to handle that. Perfect. Thanks, Vicky. Okay. The next question is from Richard. Can you do an earlier year update if necessary? You can indeed, Richard. Yep. Um, obviously, at the moment, it's 15, 16. So yes, there's always a deadline of the 19th of April at the end of each tax year to submit full payment submissions. If you miss that deadline, then all you can do is submit an earlier year update instead. And again, sorry, Karen, if I just pop back in. If I yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys. Yeah, we're just switching between screens here. So um, again, in the RTI section, if you click on new, you'll have earlier year update there. Okay. okay. Perfect. So there is talk actually of HMRC removing that option, which we're all hoping for, um, and that it will be additional FPSs that they bring in. So okay. hopefully, yeah. Okay, so the next question we have is from Stephen. Do I need to send an employment allowance EPS if I have already sent one in my previous software? You don't, Stephen. Yeah, I know just in the ex in the demo there, I just showed you if you hadn't, but um, you'll see there again, sorry. Sorry, guys, <laughs> we're just... It's just easy if I just, show you. We're just taking the questions off screen, so that's why there's a small yeah. delay. <laughs> I just pop back in here. When I click on Enable, if you previously been using another software and you've already sent an EPS, just instead of preparing one, just say you've sent it and it takes you through to the, hmm. the screen where you allocate the amount there. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that was just the same question that we had just in relation to the, the agent settings that the Vicky already answered. Um, P11D one there from Holly. Yeah. Does Bright Pay produce P11D returns? Um, it will be coming in in a, an upgrade. Um, we have a 15, if anybody's using Bright Pay 15, 16, again, there's another upgrade due shortly to have P11D functionality for the 15, 16 year due by the 19th of July, and um, then 16, 17 will have that functionality in as well. Okay, perfect. This is a bit of a, a long one from Jackie. Um, so when using the normal basic qualifying earning pension schemes, I don't understand how it, would, how it would work if an entitled employee requested to join the pension scheme. Because they are classified as entitled, this means they don't have qualifying earnings. They will therefore never be in a position to make a contribution. And when they are, they will become a non-eligible uh, job holder, so what's the point of them joining? Yeah, um, just from experience, Jackie, where people, yeah, where entitled workers wish to join, and you're right, sometimes where there's qualifying earnings, um, you know, the, the, the limits in place, obviously, because they're entitled, they're probably earning below 112, and they're, no, you know, they're never going to pay a contribution. What some people do, and it's, it's again, it's just, it would be something just to run past the pension provider that you, you in question that you've gone with, um, they then set up another group and they remove the limits so that they are paying a contribution on their full pay so that 112 doesn't kick in. So it's, it's literally from the first pound that they earn that yeah. they'll pay a contribution. So that might be the workaround okay. for them. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we just have one last question so far is Chris from Christina. Um, can I start my holiday entitled, entitlement year on the 1st of April 2016 or does it have to be after the 5th of April? No, it can be any date. Um, some people run from the 1st of January. Um, just by it as a default setting, um, you know, we default to the 6th of April because it's the start of the taxi, but you can change that date as, as you need to. Okay. Um, another question from Lisa. Um, can you create email templates and how do you set this up? 
Um, I'm not sure really what. I'm not quite. I wonder if you mean, Lisa, is it for pay slips or AE? Just maybe if you're still there, do you want to just type in a little bit just to confirm? Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind, yeah, just typing in that question again just to clarify um, or what, what templates that you're talking about. And um, just in the meantime, while we're, we're waiting, um, we have also Samantha from Head Office from Tax Assist is also on today's webinar. So she did say any automatic enrollment questions, um, you can, they can contact Samantha directly. We also have a, a support line. The, the phone number is listed on our website, or if you do have any queries, please email support at brightpay.co.uk. Um, so Lisa has just gone back on, and she's talking about for, for sending pay slips to employees or P60s, um, etc. No, they are they're set in stone, Lisa. Mm. Yeah, so basically we've programmed them in, so they're kind of hard-coded in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose yeah. it's just to avoid making mistakes. Yeah, I mean, you do have the options menu for emailing where you can remove certain items. You mm. can add more items in, in terms, of, along with the mandatory items, obviously. But um, yeah, other than that, we're we're pretty much yeah, we've locked them down. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, so thanks so much to everybody that has attended today's training session, and thanks Victoria no for problem. your <laughs> hour and a half training session there. Um, and as I said, if you do have any questions, you can either contact Samantha or our support line and we'd be happy to help you. So have a good day, everybody. I hope the sun is shining wherever you are. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay,